For those of you who had no idea of what I was talking about concerning communication, satellites and the like, I have I gave a talk on one of the seminars around, aviation seminar, and I have now edited the uh, video and it will be up and running by the end of the day. So you can at least get an idea of what space science space weather is all about and how it affects the communication. Our communication and our language. So we have the Gauss law uh, giving us the divergence of D of equal to rho as a equation one. We have known them as a divergence of D. D equal to zero as our second equation. We know that Faraday, Faraday is law giving us the curve of E minus the lead by the lead that and then improved Ampera's law Ampera's law and this was the curve of H is equal to the surface current density or the current density plus the change of the all the time values and we say that uh, at the end of the day that all these vectors E, H, E, uh, D satisfy 1, 2, 4 at the same time we say that in a given medium we have uh, D related to E in this form, which was epsilon A, and uh, B is related to the uh, field density by the factor of how permeable that medium will be. That would be the permeability mu, and H is <coughs> the same as the comparison to the uh, free space permeability and the relative permeability of rise of edge. And then we also say that we need also to know for current density, for current to go through a medium, you need to know how conducting the medium would be. And that is, and how it is uh, this equity field uh, like that is sigma. And this is where we we stopped it by yesterday and today our job is to make sure that uh, we go on and see how we can take a couple of uh, uh, algebraic gymnastics and prove that actually these uh, vectors satisfy the equation uh, the equations one and two So, taking the curve of equation 3, taking the curve of equation 3, then it means that uh, we take the curve of the curve of E, so we are taking the curve of the curve of E, which would be equal to we are doing the curve both sides, so we take the curve of minus the curve of Kalinti by Kalinti. According to the identities, according to the, the identities, the curve of the curve of the vector would be the same as the identity. The identity that uh, the curve of the curve of the vector A is equal to flat divergence of vector A minus flat squared the vector A. You did this in vector 
us and we were able to we were able to care. I uh, I got the uh, these identities are on the identities list, so you don't need to get scared about the uh, the identities and family. But we are going to use this identity, and that means that we shall be having on the left hand side the card of E being the same as Gladiator Brad, a Gladiator of E, E root, or minus, then Brad squared of E will be equal to minus uh, the card of Kalibi by Kaliti. So we have applied the identity. Or we can write it as, uh, <coughs> or we can write it as the uh, grad divergence of e minus grad squared e is equal to minus. We put the kali by kaliti on the outside, and then take the color of the vector. So we get our kali by kaliti in the color of of b. <coughs> And then, uh, of course, the curl of B is the same as mu times the curl of H. So we got this being the same as minus Kali by Kali T. And then we put the mu outside here. And then we have the curl of H in the brackets. But for greater than 4, the curl of H has some more interesting stuff. So I can call this one equation 4 prime and say that uh, using equations using equations 4 and 4 prime then we have that uh, the divergence I mean the gradient of the divergence of E minus the del squared E is equal to minus mu Kali by Kali T inu. So inu now we substitute for the curl of H, which would be J plus Kali D by Kali T. Further, D is the same as the epsilon e. So further, we say that uh, this would be the same as minus mu kali uh, kali j by kali t minus mu kali squared d by kali t squared. Just start your lamp, just substitute it and uh, doing the argument. There's nothing special about it. So then I get our right hand side. We know that uh, the current density in the is a uh, microscopic form of Ohm's law. Uh, J is equal to sigma E and also D is equal to epsilon. Epsilon P. <coughs> also, also the uh, the values of E, which we are having in the brackets here, from the first equation, is the same as uh, rho over epsilon P. So we also the values of E. This one here in the brackets is equal to rho over subside. So we now want to go and put in the, uh, the values so that we get our divergent, the, the, the graph divergence of E, which will be graph rho over epsilon, this part here, minus graph squared E, which is no problem, we have nothing to substitute for it. 
equal to minus minus uh, mu sigma and then we have calculate by calculate and then minus mu and then we put epsilon for the epsilon e b and d so epsilon that is square e by calculate square already apart from the constants uh, for the uh, volume charge density, the permittivity, the conductivity, we now have the whole equation in E. And that's why uh, that's what we mean by the vector E being able to satisfy the equation. If you can put in uh, this E, are uh, rearranging it, it will equal to, to zero, meaning that that equation, I mean that uh, vector will be able to uh, satisfy the equation. So on that note, I can say that uh, thus, thus, I put, I rearrange it, so I can take this one this side, I get the length square T, I start with high orders from the differential to the time rate. So minus, I now give this uh, time rate as a high order square. So minus mu epsilon, kali squared e, kali t squared, then minus mu sigma, kali e by kali t, then I <coughs> subtract this minus word rho over epsilon is equal to zero. And this is the idea that E satisfies and this is our equation by yes please I took this one here it became a positive I took this one this way it became a negative I formed these two there so they remain here Uh, now consider the other equation 4. We took the color of equation 3. We, we have been able to so if we want to have, uh, well, uh, discover the uh, satisfaction of this, of the, of the equation, of these equations by E, we took the color of equation 3. For looking at the satisfaction by H, we take the color of equation. So taking the curl of equation 4, then I will be having that uh, the curl of the curl of H. So the same procedure basically is what I'm going to go through and be able to get our expression for, for E, I mean for H here. So now in the curl of equation 4, then I have uh, the curl of the curl of H is equal to J plus Kali D by Kali T. And uh, if you have just come, we have the vector identity that we are using that uh, the curl of the curl of the vector A is equal to gradient divergence of this vector A minus grad square this vector and our A can be E, can be H, can be B, can be D doesn't matter it's all about an identity which you can use to get what you want so that means I implement the uh, vector identity which will be grad divergence of H minus grad squared H is equal to minus, sorry, is equal to the curl of J plus Kali D by Kali D. On the other side, I haven't bothered to take the curl as of yet. 
implying that our grad divergence of h minus grad squared h would be equal to you take the curve. The curve cross product is distributed. So meaning that we take the curve of j plus the curve of Kali D by Kali T. Normally we can say that this is equal to the curl of A of J plus Kali by Kali T in the curl of, of D. But you know that uh, J is sigma E and so is D is equal to epsilon E. So, but uh, J is equal to sigma E and D is equal to epsilon E, implying that uh, this would be equal to then our grad divergence of H minus grad squared H would be equal to the curve of, so we have j equal to sigma e, so I have sigma e nu, the curve of e, plus uh, d is epsilon, kali by kali t, e nu, the curve of, the curve of e. <coughs> yes. Uh, what is that? Ah, yeah, uh, that's true. I was supposed to be able to say the car. It's not something small, it is very big. Because if we don't do it, we have done nothing. You said something about it. Huh? You said something about it that you've not yet done that to do. To do. Okay, I took the curve both sides, that's it, and then here I haven't done anything here, so come here, I do the distribution. What is that something? You say I have not yet bothered to take a curve on the other side. Well, you can say it just to bring it our notice. Yeah, because when I was writing this, mm -hmm. I had not made the distribution. I would have uh, no, not for the distributive law of the cross product, but on the account that I thought I had written it this way. But forgetting this here is very brief. In the exam, I just cancelled. <laughs> so we have this car of E, car of E. We have the H here, and we want to prove that uh, H satisfies this equation, uh, this equation there, by getting an equation that is within or is with the variables of H or parameter H. So that means we have to make sure that gladly we get our curl of E from equation 3. So that means we say that uh, since since uh, or we say but Let's use but curl of E is equal to minus Kali B by Kali T, which is equal to minus mu Kali H by Kali T. Is that true? That is from equation 3. From equation 3. And since divergence of B is equal to zero, this would imply that the divergence of H is equal to zero. So this term here, the term that will be emanating from here, will actually vanish because 
divergence of B is the same as divergence of mu H, meaning that uh, mu E no divergence of H will equal to zero, and if you divide both sides by mu, you get divergence of H is equal to zero. <coughs> then now, our life becomes very easy, such that we say that uh, if this would imply of on substituting for all these <coughs> basics, we get this zero, so we have minus h squared, or minus grand h, grand squared h, would be equal to uh, sigma <coughs> car of e, which would be sigma mu, uh, the kali h by kali t, so minus mu sigma kali h by kali t, and then the next one would be minus uh, mu epsilon kali squared kali squared uh, h by kali t squared and on rearranging them I get uh, on rearrangement on rearrangement we got our del squared H minus we take the high models first mu epsilon kali squared H by kali t squared minus mu sigma kali H by kali t is equal to so H also satisfies our equations so we have added two more equations on our on our on our deck of equations and these equations are paramount to our basics of understanding the movement or the motion of the waves. This became a little bit interesting and if we compare it with the uh, equation for I'm gonna have to uh, we've already used this babies here so I can put the equation 5 and 6 as an addition here so that we got our uh, I don't remember very well but it's Kali squared T I mean del squared T minus mu is it mu sigma or mu epsilon? mu epsilon Kali squared T by Kali T squared minus mu sigma Kali T by Kali T then minus the drag rho of uh, epsilon is equal to this was equation 5 we just come up with uh, del squared H uh, minus mu epsilon Kali squared H by Kali T squared minus mu sigma Kali H by Kali T equals to and this is equation 6 this is when they are moving when the vector E is moved and vector H are moving in this medium of connectivity epsilon connectivity sigma and that's how, and of course, with volume charge density sigma. Most of our electromagnetic waves, like I explained the other day, <coughs> most of them traverse a vast uh, region of free space. For example, when you are having a signal from the cell, or when you are sending a signal from the cell, it has to travel through a bunch of free space. The light we enjoy from the sun is an electromagnetic wave. It has both the E and the H. So it has the, uh, the E in the vertical component and it has the H as a horizontal component. And uh, on the course I'll activate the, the vector animation which shows how these vectors move. These vectors move in this form. I'm going to 
demonstrate to you how that does move with our E in the vertical motion and with our H in the horizontal motion. So I'm going to make sure that I move like a wave. So let's go. So this is how it works. So, and that is more interesting. We would like to know what happens to it. So, in free space, in free space, we, we have no conductivity. So, the conductivity is zero. We have no charge density because there is no charge. It is free space for heaven's sake. The permittivity, the free space permits as epsilon now, so it, it permits at the rate of permittivity of free space 8.85 8, uh, 8 times 10 to the power negative 12 uh, follows per minute. And the new or the permeability of free space is actually the permeability of free space, which is the same as 4 pi times 10 to the power negative 7 per minute per meter. Thus, our two equations, 5 and 6, will have a different meaning or will look differently. Once we, uh, once we put a zero here, a zero here, once we get a zero line here and a zero here, these equations become pretty different. And uh, that means the equations, equations five and six, will respectively become will respectively become del squared del squared e minus mu sigma uh, mu epsilon but this is now mu not epsilon now Kali squared e Kali t squared is equal to zero and we say that is equation seven and the equation a here, uh, 6 here becomes del squared h minus mu naught epsilon naught chi squared h by chi t squared equals to 0. And this is equation <coughs> 8. Can anyone of you try to say something about this equation? Uh, these equations? In the future, some of the things may change as time goes on. You know, we always know that the light travels faster, nothing travels faster than the light. I'm sure in the future, light may be so equations, equations 7 and 8 are referred to as, are referred to as wave equations, wave equations. Comparing them with the classical equation, <coughs> comparing them with 
the class coefficient, with the class equation or what we call the general class for all we say the general the general way of equation this class for equation we did it I think I don't know whether we did it in class for mechanics or you did it in class for mechanics too the grad, but you are doing, uh, you did it in uh, web optics, isn't it? Grad spread phi minus one over nu nu squared kali squared phi or phi by kali kali uh, squared is equal to zero. And this is our equation nine. Now we conclude, we conclude that at a time, that at a time, that at a time, variations in, variations in electric, Variations in electric or magnetic fields <coughs> are propagated with the same speed. Are propagated with the same speed. Are propagated with the same speed. And this speed here, nu, is the same as what we know as the speed of light, C, which is the same as the reciprocal of the product of nu naught, epsilon naught, squared. <coughs> and indeed, uh, this would be in free space. As a way of proving it, you should be able to get uh, uh, try it out by substituting for uh, substitute substitute for epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the power negative 12 farad per minute versus 4 pi times 10 to the power negative 7 on raise per minute and you should be able to get C is equal to uh, what is the speed of light? 2.8 what? 2.9999928236 Okay, 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per Try it out, see whether when you substitute this uh, multiply them, take the square root, take the reciprocal, and see whether you got the speed being about 2.99 something as your speed of height. In uh, so once uh, this was able to be achieved by Maxwell, and was able to see this as the speed of these field lines, uh, then he said yes. Actually, uh, we have the speed of light being this much. So in, when an, another genius comes up, probably we may get the speed of light being slower. <laughs> and uh, you know light is debatable. You can say light is a chunk of photons, which are particles, because when you direct a, a, a stream of photons in light on a, on a solar panel, you are able to eject off and excite electrons, create holes, and have the current electricity flow. When you expose a material to light for a long time, it changes color. And even if you were to put it in a glass, it will change color because these photons are busy impacting on it. Uh, you get, you see my shirt, the other shirt with stripes has a different color because of the light. 
when I see other places, okay, but this one where the light is always so it, it uh, and also you know that they are clothes which are sensitive to color. They don't have eyes, they only interact with the forums which fall on them. So compare it when we compare this equation here with this.
the refractive index of the glass you were using in all level and A level. So where end is the refractive index? Is the refractive index of milli? And uh, comparison of equations, comparison of equations 12 and 11 years. If we compare these two, this one and this one, we find that actually the refractive index is the uh, equal to the square root of the relative familiarity, familiarity and familiarity. And we get this as our equation 13. We however not, we not that uh, this applies only, this applies only If the refractive index, the relative permeability and relative permittivity are determined at the same, are determined at the same frequency. If you have different, if they are, if they are if you are looking at it at different frequencies, then you will get because the reflect the refraction depends on how the light, the wavelength of the light. Because when you got the uh, the prism in your eyes, when you got a prism with your white light, then because of different wavelength, this prism was able to separate the light in terms of Red, yellow, sorry. From red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and black. Because of this different uh, wavelength, of course, which determines uh, the frequency. So you have to say at this frequency, if you are considering for the red, then you consider for the red. If you are considering for the blue, consider for the blue. That's why in the lab we use like a sodium light, and that sodium light should give you a peculiar wavelength so that you can test out other things. Otherwise, if you were to look at the, uh, the, the, the refraction of violet, you may think the glass has a higher refractive index compared to if you were more skewed towards looking at the red, red light. So then we say that uh, in non-magnetic uh, non media, in non-magnetic media, we got our new RV equal to 1. Thus, if you are considering like a glass, a glass block, it means that your refractive index will be the same as square root of the relative permittivity of the glass block. So go in the books and for the relative permittivity of the glass block, look for its refractive index and see whether you can get about 1.5. <coughs> 1. This one is our equation 14. On that note, I sh we should be able to expand it <coughs> more on Thursday, which is tomorrow, whereby we shall look at the monochromatic propagation in an arbitrary direction in a solution of I mean, uh, look at the solutions of the waves uh, 7 and 8 and see how we can come up with a couple of other conclusions. Um,
got these things. Enjoy your time.